Nicolaas Nico Tinbergen FRS was a Dutch biologist and ornithologist who shared the 1973 Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine with Carl von Frisch and Conrad Lorenz for their discoveries concerning organization and elicitation of individual and social behavior patterns in animals. In 1951 he published The Study of Instinct, an influential book on animal behavior. In the 1960s, he collaborated with filmmaker Hugh Falkus on a series of wildlife films, including The Riddle of the Rook and Signals for Survival, which won the Italia Prize in that year in the American Blue Ribbon in 1971. Education and early life. Born in The Hague, Netherlands, he was one of five children of Dirk Cornelis Tinbergen and his wife Jeanette van Eek. His brother Jan Tinbergen won the first Bank of Sweden Prize in Economic Sciences in memory of Alfred Nobel in 1969. Another brother, Luke Tinbergen, was also a noted biologist. Tinbergen's interest in nature manifested itself when he was young. He studied biology at Leiden University and was a prisoner of war during World War II. Tinbergen's experience as a prisoner of the Nazis led to some friction with longtime intellectual collaborator Conrad Lorenz, and it was several years before the two reconciled. After the war, Tinbergen moved to England, where he taught at the University of Oxford and was a fellow first at Merton College, Oxford and later at Wolfson College, Oxford. Several of his Oxford graduate students went on to become prominent biologists. These include Richard Dawkins, Marion Dawkins, Desmond Morris, and Ian Douglas Hamilton. Research in career. The study of instinct in 1951. Tinbergen's The Study of Instinct was published. Behavioral ecologists and evolutionary biologists still recognize the contribution this book offered the field of behavior science studies. The study of instinct summarizes Tinbergen's ideas on innate behavioral reactions in animals and the adaptiveness and evolutionary aspects of these behaviors. By behavior, he means the total movements made by the intact animal. Innate behavior is that which is not changed by the learning process. The major question of the book is the role of internal and external stimuli in controlling the expression of behavior. In particular, he was interested in explaining spontaneous behaviors, those that occurred in their complete form the first time they were performed and that seemed resistant to the effects of learning. He explains how behavior can be considered a combination of these spontaneous behavior patterns and a set series of reactions to particular stimuli. Behavior is a reaction in that to a certain extent it is reliant on external stimuli. However it is also spontaneous since it is also dependent upon internal causal factors. His model for how certain behavioral reactions are provoked was based on work by Conrad Lorenz. Lorenz postulated that for each instinctive act there is a specific energy which builds up in a reservoir in the brain. In this model, Lorenz envisioned a reservoir with a spring valve at its base that an appropriate stimulus could act on, much like a weight on a scale pan pulling against a spring and releasing the reservoir of energy, an action which would lead an animal to express the desired behavior. Tinbergen added complexity to this model, a model now known as Tinbergen's hierarchical model. He suggested that motivational impulses build up in nervous centers in the brain which are held in check by blocks. The blocks are removed by an innate releasing mechanism that allows the energy to flow to the next center in a cascade until the behavior is expressed. Tinbergen's model shows multiple levels of complexity and that related behaviors are grouped. 
An example is in his experiments with foraging honeybees. He showed that honeybees show curiosity for yellow and blue paper models of flowers, and suggested that these were visual stimuli causing the build-up of energy in one specific center. However, the bees rarely landed on the model flowers unless the proper odor was also applied. In this case, the chemical stimuli of the odor allowed the next link in the chain to be released encouraging the bee to land. The final step was for the bee to insert its mouth ports into the flower and initiate suckling. Tinbergen envisioned this as concluding the reaction set for honeybee feeding behavior. Nobel Prize. In 1973 Tinbergen, along with Conrad Lorenz and Carl von Frisch, were awarded the Nobel Prize in Physiology and Medicine for their discoveries concerning organization and elicitation of individual and social behavior patterns. The award recognized the studies on genetically programmed behavior patterns, their origins, maturation and their elicitation by key stimuli. In his Nobel lecture, Tinbergen addressed the somewhat unconventional decision of the Nobel Foundation to award the prize for physiology and medicine to three men who had, until recently been regarded as mere animal watchers. Tinbergen stated that the revival of the watching and wondering approach to studying behavior could indeed contribute to the relief of human suffering. The studies performed by the trio in fish, insects and birds laid the foundation for further studies on the importance of specific experiences during critical periods of normal development, as well as the effects of abnormal psychosocial situations in mammals. At the time, these discoveries were stated to have caused a breakthrough in the understanding of the mechanisms behind various symptoms of psychiatric disease, such as anguish, compulsive obsession, stereotypic behavior and catatonic posture. Tinbergen's contribution to these studies included the testing of the hypotheses of Lorenz von Frisch by means of comprehensive, careful, and ingenious experiments as well as his work on supernormal stimuli. The work of Tinbergen during this time was also regarded as having possible implications for further research in child development and behavior. He also caused some intrigue by dedicating a large part of his acceptance speech to F.M. Alexander, originator of the Alexander Technique, a method which investigates postural reflexes and responses in human beings. Other awards and honors. In 1950 Tin Bergen became member of the Royal Netherlands Academy of Arts and Sciences. He was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1962. He was also awarded the Godman Salvin Medal in 1969 by the British Ornithologists' Union, and in 1973 received the Swam de Dam Medal and Wilhelm Bolsch Medal. Four questions Tinberg and described four questions he believed should be asked of any animal behavior, which were, causation, what are the stimuli that elicit the response, and how has it been modified by recent learning, how do behavior and psyche function on the molecular, physiological, neuroethological, cognitive and social level, and what do the relations between the levels look like? Development. How does the behavior change with age, and what early experiences are necessary for the behavior to be shown? Which developmental steps and which environmental factors play when which role? Function. How does the behavior impact on the animal's chances of survival and reproduction? Evolution. How does the behavior compare with similar behavior in related species, and how might it have arisen through the process of phylogeny? Why did structural associations evolve in this manner and not otherwise? Asterisk. In ethology and sociobiology, causation and ontogeny are summarized as the proximate mechanisms, while adaptation and phylogeny are the ultimate mechanisms. They are still considered as the cornerstone of modern ethology, sociobiology and transdisciplinarity in human sciences. 
supernormal stimulus. A major body of Tinbergen's research focused on what he termed the supernormal stimulus. This was the concept that one could build an artificial object which was a stronger stimulus a releaser for an instinct than the object for which the instinct originally evolved. He constructed plaster eggs to see which a bird preferred to sit on, finding that they would select those that were larger, had more defined markings, or more saturated color, and a dayglow bright one with black polka dots would be selected over the bird's own pale, dappled eggs. Tinbergen found that territorial male three-spined stickleback would attack a wooden fish model more vigorously than a real male if its underside was redder. He constructed cardboard dummy butterflies with more defined markings that male butterflies would try to mate with in preference to real females. The superstimulus, by its exaggerations, clearly delineated what characteristics were eliciting the instinctual response. Among the modern works calling attention to Tinbergen's classic work is Deirdre Barrett's 2010 book, Supernormal Stimuli. Autism Tinbergen applied his observational methods to the problems of autistic children. He recommended a holding therapy, in which parents hold their autistic children for long periods of time while attempting to establish eye contact, even when a child resists the embrace. However, his interpretations of autistic behavior, and the holding therapy that he recommended, lacked scientific support and the therapy is described as controversial and potentially abusive. Publications Personal Life Tinbergen was a member of the advisory committee to the Anti-Concord Project and was as an atheist. Tinbergen married Elizabeth Rutten and they had five children. Later in life he suffered depression and feared he might, like his brother Luke, commit suicide. He was treated by his friend whose ideas he had greatly influenced, John Bowlby. Tinbergen died on 21 December 1988, after suffering a stroke at his home in Oxford, England.